Hello everybody and welcome to Epigee's Analyses. Today we're going to look at week one, day two of the 2015 LCS Spring Split Cloud9 versus Gravity. We're going to go through picks and bans here real quick. I'm going to talk about um, different team comp advantages, stuff like that. Uh, why people banned what they did here. Um, we see the first ban, I have it paused right now, we see the first ban coming out here with J4 from Cloud9. Um, J4 brings a lot of utility to his team, a good pre-6 uh, gank pressure, decent jungle clear, a little bit, uh, a little, takes a little bit of damage, but um, uh, overall solid pick. He's one of the top three junglers, so you're pretty much always going to see him picked or banned. Here we have a uh, target ban coming out. We got the Rumble ban from Gravity. That's directly, directly a ban to counter Balls. Balls one of the best known Rumble players in the league. Uh, they're just going to ban that out. Limit his presence in lane. Uh, Rumble has a great... 2v1, so Gravities might be looking for a uh, 2v2 lane matchup. Sneaky Elimination, however, do have a huge reputation as being a really a really carry lane. Uh, if you saw what they did to Piglet in week one, uh, week two when, when Piglet was there, uh, you can tell they're just absolutely dominant in lane. Um, but the mostly target banning that away from Balls' is Rumble. We're going to continue on here, see who gets banned next. Uh, there we go. Nar ban coming out. Um, Nar. Uh, I guess that's because Balls doesn't want to deal with him. Nar brings a ton of um, uh, a ton of team fight potential. He's he's a really a team fight oriented champion. He's got a ton of CC, a ton of damage, and his his lane pressure is really good. And I, I really like that people are starting to ban him. If you notice, the win rate for for Nar is is usually really well as long as there's not a Lissandra picked. So um, perhaps Balls is looking for a Lissandra here, something like that, because uh, she seems to do really well against Nar. If you look at the statistics, Lissandra always does pretty well against Nar. If you have Jarvan banned, you don't need the Nar ban, because uh, these two together are absolutely devastating. These synergize really well. However, if you do get these two and pick up a pick up a Janna early, that's fine. Um, uh, that's something that you see a lot. The people they'll hand over Jarvan, hand over Nar, and then pick up a Janna, or hand over Sivir and pick up a Janna. Um, looks like Lissandra's ban here. Good response to the Nar. Uh, you see Lissandra coming ban, ban because uh, banning Nar kind of dictates that you want to pick up Lissandra. Not to mention she's a super strong pick anyway. Her team fight potential is really good. Her wave clear is excellent. You can't really siege turrets when she's on the team because uh, one or two Qs is going to knock up the entire wave. Uh, that's really good. Um, uh, continue on here. We're going to look for their next ban. Sivir comes out. Um, Again, the Sivir ban, I'm, I, this, I'm not incredibly sure what they're looking for. Sneaky, perhaps he doesn't really want to play Sivir, because Sivir is not that carry of a carry. She's a utility carry with the movement speed of her ultimate. Good engage, good disengage. However, it's not going to bring the same damage as, say, uh, Twitch, Will, um, Graves, uh, Corky, Kog'Maw, those kind of things. The Sivir ban here doesn't go completely like for nothing. Um, if you have a Janna on your team, or if Janna's available, the Sivir isn't too threatening. However, uh, Gravity does have a chance to ban Janna here, and then the Sivir would be a little bit more devastating. However, I, I would have expected them to ban um, a, a target ban someone. Maybe maybe look for a, a Scion ban for Haunter, a Kassadin ban. Kassadin's a really popular ban, and although I don't really like Kassadin as a ban, I also think he's, he's a solid ban. Um, uh, uh, knowing Cloud9's team comp, what they're going to run, Kassadin would have been a fine ban here. Zed would have been a great ban because uh, just the dive is insane. Uh, maybe a Lee Sin or a Rengar ban against St. Vicious, however we, we know what he's going to play and that, that wouldn't have mattered. A Thresh ban against Bunny Fufu would have been great, I think, but um, the Sivir ban, it's, it's okay. I don't like it very much, to be honest. Uh, we're going to zoom forward here and look for it. The Fizz ban, I guess that's a targeted against High because Fizz played it before, but if you remember that game that High played, High was very unconvincing on Fizz. He was really he played really poorly, he engaged at weird times, Bjergsen got a free kill on him in a 1v1, uh, stuff like that. So I would have I would have liked if Gravity just left that open and, and said, here, take this, maybe ban um, Rek'Sai or Janna. Again, people ban Rek'Sai all the time, and I don't really see the threat. Rek'Sai, I understand he has an extreme lane pressure and extreme map pressure uh, once he hits 6 with that ultimate, but his ganks are mm, his ganks are okay. They're not great. The flash knockup is good, but um, his damage is all sustained. He's got very little burst unless he has his true fury, unless he has true damage because of uh, the fury on his E. But um, overall, I'm not that impressed with Rek'Sai. So uh, perhaps I would have liked to see... Um, uh, who else could you ban here against Balls? Um... Balls, Sneaky, Elimination, Caitlyn. 
That's a stupid ban, but knowing their team count, Caitlyn would have been a really good ban here. Caitlyn or Corky even, and Annie would have been a good ban, anything that's not Fizz. I don't understand this Fizz pick, because going off of Gravity's team comp, what they end up doing is, is diving really hard, which is great, but but this doesn't, this isn't a counter diver, you know? Caitlyn is, is hard to dive, Caitlyn, long range, nets back, team can peel for her. Cork gets hard to dive, a lot of damage early, uh, he can Valkyrie away, stuff like that, but um, uh, anyway, Cloud9 picks up Rek'Sai, so you know Rek'Sai's going in the jungle, could be played top lane, but we haven't seen that at all in the North American LCS, so it's likely that he's going, uh, Meteos is going to go in the jungle with the Rek'Sai pick, however, um, again, I don't really like Rek'Sai, I don't think he brings that much to a team, he's not, he doesn't impress me that much, but um, uh, we're going to continue on here, uh, Cassidy and... Morgana locked in. Leaving the Cassidyn up is a little bit bold, but I like that they did that. I don't think Cassidyn... If Cassidyn's ahead, he doesn't really... He doesn't pack damage. All he is is mobile and annoying. He does a little bit of poke. He jumps in, but he's not that tanky. He's a little bit tanky with Zonia's, but he's... I don't know. He's like a medium champion. He does medium damage, is medium tank with extreme mobility. That's, that's all he is. He's like if you get a Giant's Belt on Fizz. Really... It's whatever. They end up diving. The, the dive comp they build around this Kassadin is really good, I think. But um, the Kassadin in itself, I'm not really crazy about that pick. It doesn't do well, and you'll see it not do well once you get into the game. Um, especially in the 2v1. Kassadin's saying, please 2v1 me, because I suck at 2v1s. I can queue something every 9 seconds, but I can't actually move up at all, because if I get CC, and I'm instantly dead before I'm level 6. Uh, we're going to continue on here. Medios and Hi, Looking to pick up... Uh, Alright, so they do grab the Janna. Uh, with the Sivir ban and the Janna pickup, I don't, again, I don't like the Sivir ban. Janna, they have Janna on their team now, which means Sivir disengage is not that threatening. Sivir disengage is a little bit threatening, but then you have uh, Scion right here to chase him down. So what does Sivir actually, what does the Sivir ban accomplish? Um, I don't really know. I don't know what the, what the, the idea of what they were looking for here, especially um, with their, with their mid pick. You'll see that in a little bit. Um, Sivir's got a really strong, or no, sorry, Janna has a, a decent laning phase, she's good, but again, with the Cassidy pick, they're looking for the 1v2. Janna is much weaker in a, in a 2v1, because she doesn't pack the same CC as a Morgana does, as a Thresh does, something like that. So, I would have liked to see Cloud9 pick up, uh, pick up Thresh. Uh, yeah, I think I would have liked to see Cloud9 pick up Thresh, and then look for themselves, do the lane swap, look for the 2v1 to pressure the Cassidy out of lane. Um, uh, but I suppose they don't know. You can't know that Cassidy's going top, you can play mid too. But um, at this point, um, the Scion pick, he's, he's really decent into 2v1. He does really good. He does the Suicide on strats at level 1. And then uh, and then ends up at level 2 in the lane right away. Uh, I'll move on here. Uh, this is what they end up locking in here. Got Vi for St. Vicious and uh, Corky for Cop. Uh, Cop loves Corky. Cop's going to play the crap out of Corky. And he does okay. Uh, he gets a good first blood on high this game. I'm sorry, on Scion this game. Balls. But, um... Uh, the the thing he does really is one he's a poker which they have no poke on their team and they won't uh, when they finish it out here round it out with the Zed pick but um uh, he pokes so he does a little bit of damage but he can also take care of himself he's not the longest range champion but he's long enough ranged mixed in with his burst damage that he can get his damage off and then get out of the situation he's in without needing to be babysat. Morgana's free to go in and, and ult everyone. Morgana's free to black shield Vi as she jumps in, or Vi's you know, to as he's jumping in on Cassidy. But Morgana's not stuck babysitting this guy. Babysitting Corky. So Corky, uh, Caitlyn pick, like I said, that would have been a good ban there. But um, uh, Corky, Caitlyn, those picks who else be Graves is okay, but his uh, range is a little bit shorter. And if you're not in like melee range, his Q doesn't do the same damage. So uh, Corky ultimately packs more punch from a longer distance than Graves is going to do at a shorter distance. Um, the two divers here are, are telling are telling Cloud9 right here. You got Cassidy to dive, you got Vi to dive. So what is Cloud9 going to do in respond? They want to pick someone very mobile, someone that can get out of this dive, or if they, or maybe someone tanky who can sustain this dive if they're the ones getting messed up. Because uh, uh, right now, dangerous picks would be a Kogma. Um, Zareth would be a super dangerous pick. Like if they locked in Zareth here, that's just saying that's that's how you're advertising to them. Please dive me. I want to die in these fights because you can't stop Vi, you can't stop Cassidy, and um, you're gonna see the Zed pick in a little bit, and you can't stop that either. But what does Cloud9 do? They say I don't care about your dive at all. I'm gonna lock in Kogma and Oriana. Oh man, and that's that's kind of frustrating to me. 
because this is this is Telltale Dive right here, and um, and uh, what they're trying to do is they're they're they it's really a disrespect thing. I think they say I, we don't respect this dive. We're not respecting this damage. Or we're not even respecting the lane pressure Vi is going to bring out. Uh, then again, they do have uh, Rexi on a uh, Medios on Rexi, so Vi putting out pressure early is is pretty much counteracted. They they match up fairly well, but they're saying I don't we don't care about your dive. Just go ahead and dive Kogma. Go ahead and dive. Oriana, both very immobile, both very squishy, very easily dove in, dived, dived, I don't know, easily killed the champions. They, they die really easy, but still, uh, they lock them in anyway. Uh, the double shield is going to be really good for Kogma. However, if, uh, um, if either of these people get behind, Kogma or Oriana get behind, they're going to be so easy to kill, and counteractively, if Vi or Cassidy get ahead, they're going to do so much damage that they're not going to be able to peel these people off. Rek'Sai's not that great a peeler, Scion's an okay peeler, he's got his ult, he's got his charge Q, but all of that is really dodgeable and really telltale. Scion really wants to be messing up the backline and zoning people out of a fight, but they're not going to get a chance to do that because he's going to be stuck peeling for these two champions this entire game. Scion's not going to be capitalized, used to his full potential. Uh, we're going to move forward here, and I already spoiled it for everyone. They do lock in Zed right here, and this is this is this is a good team comp by Gravity, in my opinion. Um, you got the dive, 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 a AD carry that can fend for himself, and then follow up on your dive. If Zed jumps in, people are going to have to hit Zed. They can't hit Morgana if she walks in and ults three people. Um, if uh, a Vi and Zed bow in, again, you have to hit these two champions, you can't hit Morgana. Morgana's going to be the one scooting by for free and and uh, just wrecking everyone with the AoE stun and then the AoE damage from Corky. Good follow up here. Um, and their lanes are all pretty solid. Zed lanes fine against Orianna. Scion lanes, or Kassadin lanes fine against Scion. A lot of magic damage from Scion and a magic shield from Kassadin. However, they do get the 2v1. Um, uh, Cloud9 oddly enough doesn't opt for the 2v1 it's gravity who opts for the gops for the lane spot but it ends up in their advantage because um high randomly dies early however haunter i think plays this really bad and gets zoned off early um i'm not quite sure what happens we'll dive into that when we do the actual analysis video of the gameplay but um uh, overall, yeah, I give the team comp to Gravity. Um, if any of these people get ahead at any point, they're too threatening that these people aren't going to deal with, or, or Cloud9's not going to be able to deal with them. Cloud9, uh, Medios on Rek'Sai, I, I don't know what the champion does. And not to say I don't know what it does, I don't know why people prioritize it so much. The lane pressure, nice. The ganks, average. The farm, average. The dive in team fights, like, what is his team fight role? Appealing, tanky, damage dealer, diver, peeler? Uh, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what uh, I don't know what Rexi really does in these team fights, and I don't know how he contributes to this. What I would have liked to see, and what would have been cool, is if you get like a Lulu top lane with like oh I don't know who can survive dive mid lane. Hmm. I like this. Hmm. Now that we're at the end of champion select, I think about this, and I like this fizz pick a little bit more. If Gravity knew they were going to run Vi this whole time, Vi and Zed. This Fizz pick is pretty good, because you see Vi, you see Zed, and you're, all you want to do is lock in the Fizz, Playful Tricks are out of Zed ult, Playful Tricks are out of Vi ult, put them both on cooldown, and um, then you have one less target to ult. However, if Cloud9 had Fizz right here, um, they can't really pick this Kogma anymore. It's the double shield protection and mobility, uh, the double move speed from this that they, that they get to keep the Kogma alive. Uh, that being said, I don't like the Kogma pick into the Zed Cassidy and into the Zed Vi. I think that's super dangerous, being that he has no mobility. Um, what would I like to see? I would have liked to see Lee Sin in the jungle to peel, um, to peel, uh, to peel the divers off of Cass or Kogma a little bit more. I would have liked to see um, uh, even Rengar. I think peels a little bit better than Rexai does. Although I haven't seen a we have I, we haven't seen a good Rengar in NALCS. I'm gonna be honest. Um, the Korean scene they have some good Rengars, but um, uh, in terms of the NA performance, I think Rengar's uh, it's it's a trap champion. People see people play them and and they pick them themselves, and then they end up doing nothing. They they don't build damage. They they build full tank and they can't peel. They can't engage because they die too quickly. I haven't seen a good Rengar yet.
I give the team comp advantage here to Gravity. I think Gravity is a overall well better designed team than Cloud9 does. Cloud9 is a mix of engage and dive with balls and medios, both playing champions that want to be in the back lines, and peel with Cloud or high sneaky and lemonation want to stay in their Cloud9's back lines and uh, keep Kogma alive. Perhaps a good Orianna ulti could turn this, but um, we don't see any good Orianna ultis. We see a uh, high get kind of um, wrecked. He gets wrecked in lane a little bit, but um. Uh, overall, I think Gravity outdrafted them just a little bit. Uh, the target ban on Rumble was really good. The Lissandra ban was decent. Uh, the Fizz ban I didn't like originally, but it was really good. Um, the Jarvan Nar ban I don't. Uh, I, get, I respect the Jarvan ban because they want to keep these. You want to keep this, the Kogma alive. You want to peel these people. And Jarvan's engage is really good. You put the Cataclysm around, and then these divers are free to follow up. However, the Vi actually does Jarvan's job a little bit better in trying to kill Kogma, trying to kill High, but. Um, I don't I think this NAR ban was necessary. I don't think NAR would have complemented their team comp very well, Gravity's, and I don't think it would have countered their team comp very well. Um, however, NAR does have a pretty good lane against Cassidy. That being said, they opt into a 2v1 anyway. Um, I don't know. I don't... Uh, man. Like, the Cassidy ends up working out, but only because Cloud9 misplays really hard with their advantage. Um, I'm trying to think of a better... I really... I really would have been a great top laner. Yeah, I like that better. Have Aurelia uh, sit in the 2v1. Actually, Aurelia would probably do a double jungle with St. Vicious for a little bit. And then uh, and then go to lane. But I don't... Uh, hmm. Ponder Ponder. Um, I'm not quite sure what a better top laner would have been. But um, uh, I think someone that Haunter maybe would be more comfortable on. Maybe if they picked up the Scion early, that would have been okay. Because uh, Scion's dive is okay, and his peel is okay too, so he could even even help keep Corky alive a little bit. Um, one thing that Cloud9 doesn't really have an answer for is Zed uh, split push. They, they don't really have a response to that. They send Balls down, and then Balls dies to Zed, because he's going to build all MR, because of uh, the lane against Haunter and Bunny Fufu. Uh, like I said, they 2v1. But um, Rek'Sai can't deal with Zed. Uh, High certainly can't deal with Zed. Uh, as a Orianna, I, once you get Zonias, maybe, but um, he even delays the Zonias till the very, the very end of that game, and then dies under turret anyway. Um, the Janna pick I really like, uh, the Scion pick I sort of like, but alas, overall I really enjoy Gravity's team comp much, much more. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to check out the game, uh, click the annotation above. Otherwise, follow me, like the video, etc., etc. And as always, have a wonderful time.